Follow us on this journey back in time at the discovery of what theatres were like at the time of Shakespeare. Theatre going was an extremely popular form of entertainment in Shakespeare's time and people from all social classes attended the playhouses. As John Chamberlain wrote in 1624, old and young, rich and poor, master and servant, papists and puritans, the theatre was a place for all. There were many theatres in London. The first permanent playhouse, called the Theatre, was built outside the walls of London by James Burbage in 1576. But one of the most important theatres in London was for sure the Globe. Shakespeare became co-owner of the Globe when it was opened in 1599. Shakespeare was already active in London by the year 1592. At first he was just a fellow actor and a dramatist, then also shareholder of the Lord Chamberlain's Man. Shakespeare became the most successful playwright of his time and was much appreciated at court. In summer they performed at the Globe, in winter at the indoor private Blackfriars Theatre. During a performance of Harry V, cannons were fired when the actors entered on stage. Unfortunately, cannons set lights to detach the roof and suddenly the theatre went up in a mass of flames. People tried to escape through the small exits. The theatre was completely consumed to the ground. What we can see today along the River Thames in London is the reconstructed version of the Old Globe. It is situated about 200 yards from the seat of Shakespeare's original globe. No detailed architectural drawings or plans have survived, but historians and architects have built up a vast body of research material so that the globe, was we can see today, is as accurate as possible to the old original. Besides the globe, there were many other theatres in London in Shakespeare's time, like the Rose, the Swan, the Black Paris, the Theatre. Theatre going was extremely popular in Shakespeare's time, so that many theatres were built in the city of London, as well as in other parts of the country. Most Elizabethan theatres had the same architectural structure. The theatre had a circular shape. It was made of wood and covered with a thatched roof, on top of which there was a cannon. The firing of the cannon signaled that the play was going to begin. Inside the theatre, the ground floor was called the yard, and it was open to the sky. The yard was surrounded by three levels of covered galleries that only rich people could afford. The theatre was open to people from all social ranks. In fact, also poor people could go to the theatre, but they had to stand in the yard where the tickets cost only one penny. Unfortunately, when it rained, they got wet, because the central part of the theatre had no roof. Instead, lords and ladies used to sit in the galleries to watch plays. The, the tickets here cost two pence, so one penny more than in the yard. The stage and the apron jutted out in the yard so that ground links and direct contact with the actors performing on stage. The stage was divided in four levels, with a balcony above but no scenery or curtains. Under the stage there was a space. This area was used to represent ghosts, hell, purgatory or other supernatural 
There was a trapdoor through which actors could come up and down. A second level was the main stage, where most of the action took place. The third level was used to denote city walls, mountains or hills. The top level was known as the heaven and actors could be lowered down onto the stage by means of ropes and pulleys. The actors play not only on the stage, but they could also use the balcony like in the famous love scene of Romeo and Juliet. There was no lighting in the theatre because the plays were held between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. When the actors wanted to indicate the night, they had to carry torches. There were no toilets in the theatre. Some people used the river Thames, but it was several streets away. Most people just pass around buckets and urinate in full view of the rest of the crowd. It could be very embarrassing to read the love scene. Playwrights were aware of the fact that they had to write new plays in order to satisfy the spectators and attract even more people to the shows. The plays were used adver advertised on sheets of paper called playbills, which were put in the street around theatres. People went to the theatre already knowing what the plot was going to be about, so playwrights like Shakespeare wrote plays to meet the audience's expectations. In Shakespeare's time, people from all social classes attend the playhouses. Those with the cheapest tickets were called ground links because they had to stand to watch a performance. Ironically, they were the ones who could enjoy the best view. Sometimes they were also called tin cards because they smelled strongly. These were the poorest spectators who paid just one penny. The spectators sitting in the galleries were often richer than the groundlings. Sometimes lords and ladies would sit in the galleries to watch a play. They could afford the extra penny for the galleries also because they wanted to escape the crowd in the yard. At the theatre, the atmosphere was similar to a concert of today. The people walked around the theatre, spoke and ate. Sometimes it happened that people fought for the best view. Unlike today, theatre audience Shakespeare's public was noisy and keen to interact, cheering and clapping the heroes, shouting and even throwing rubbish at them if their performance did not meet their expectations. Sometimes the audience could even become aggressive and damage the chairs and stools or curtains and hoods so that the actors had to change play in order to satisfy the spectators. In the Elizabethan theatre, the audience was written to the success of a play. Elizabethan theatres could not afford much scenery. Often, theatre companies used simple paint panels placed upstage and the scene was set just through costumes, language and sounds. The actors performed on a stage divided into four levels. A trapdoor was used to make actors appear and disappear like ghosts, for example, or to create the illusion of fog. One of the most gory visual effects was created by using animal intestines filled with blood. When an actor put it under his clothes and was it with a sword, another actor, the blood would go out to show that he was killed. Many plays required the use of special effects, which the actors had to create by themselves. Some plays required the entrance of live animals, such as a dog or a bear, but there is no record that live animals were actually used in the performances. The sound of bird was created by blowing through a pipe in a pot of water. Other sounds were produced under the stage. 
In Shakespeare's time, also fireworks and cannons were used to create special sounds. To simulate the sound of thunder of the fury of a battle, a rolling cannonball or a metal sheet were used. Music was also important to create the atmosphere. The musicians were usually seated in the gallery above the stage. There was no lighting in the theatre. Actors, in fact, used the sunlight to produce their plays. Since performances usually were held in the afternoon, it was impossible to recreate darkness. If a scene took place in the dark, actors had to carry torches on stage and the audience had to guess what was about to happen. As for props and materials to be used during a performance, these were property of the company and were therefore called also the properties. Shakespeare's theatre had a lot of useful props for a wide variety of plays. They could be small, portable objects like candles, sword, pieces of furniture, etc. Theatre companies possessed costumes and wigs, which were often elaborate and richly decorated. Some of the costumes were second-hand, passed on from the nobility. The costumes were put in the tiring house, where the actors did their makeup and prepared before a performance. Even if people were forbidden to wear inappropriate clothes to their social status, Actors could break this code to give information to the audience about their character. Actors were not part of high society. Before the playhouses were built, actors were organized in traveling companies. They were considered like trumps and could be persecuted because of that. Generally, they had not studied at university and often they were not even able to read. However, some actors became famous and rich, like for example Shakespeare, who was also a shareholder of the globe. Actors had to work extremely hard to keep their audiences amused and entertained. The principal actors in a troupe were known as sharers, as they shared in both the profits and the expenses, handling the management and financial questions, hiring extra staff when needed and deciding which new plays to perform. So the most important actors were the ones who organized and decide everything. All actors in Shakespeare's time were men, so female roles would be performed by young big boys because it was forbidden for women to perform on stage, that above all for religious reasons. Actors played more than one role on stage because there were few actors in this period. All the actors had to be all around too. Anyway, this would give the actors also the possibility to show all their skills and abilities. Theatre companies, which made often fun of each other, recruited boys aged between 12 and 20 as apprentices to the trade. Actors often needed protection, since the theatre was considered by the Puritans as a vicious place. The person, often a noble or a lady, who helped the actors when they got into troubles was called patron. The patron would give money and prestige to the companies to create a show. The patron would stand up if somebody in the company got into troubles. In return for this, the company acted for the patron in some special events at his palace. Up to six different plays may have been performed in one week. Rehearsals alternated sometimes with performances. Finally, actors had to create their own special effects, but they also helped other actors with costumes and makeup. This is the end of our discover of Elizabethan theatres. It's been exciting for us to see how theatres were like at Shakespeare's time. We are currently attending a ballet high school, and one day theatre could be our workplace. Who knows? We hope so.